Hello everyone, this is Lillian and it's time for our three minutes with the word audio devotional. Today's topic in the Help of God series is Why Go to God, part three. And our anchor scripture is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 146 and verse seven, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The last day, we started discussing the attributes the psalmist listed out that informed his decision to go to God for help rather than man. In verse 7, today's scripture, the Bible talks about three powerful things. One, God executes justice for the oppressed. Maybe because of my interaction with law as a very young child, and indeed for my entire early adulthood, injustice was something I could never stomach especially when I suffered it. It would hurt me and kill a part of me when I could not be recompensed or given justice for something done to me. Even as a kid, it will hurt me when I reported a wrong done to me and no action was taken to redress it. I hated oppression and I was often frustrated because I grew up in a country where oppression thrived. There was always a disquiet in my spirit. Imagine the rest I now have knowing and believing that God executes justice for the oppressed. It may take a while, but if you will run to him for help, you will get justice. This applies not only to physical oppression, but to spiritual oppression as well. There are people under the sound of my voice that have been oppressed by spiritual forces. Please do not be too modern to believe these kinds of things. Can you be more modern than God? If you are one of such people, here is your deliverance. God executes justice for the oppressed. Are there powers that have held you down physically and spiritually? Your go-to person for help should be God. He executes justice. That scripture also says he gives food to the hungry. Whether you are spiritually hungry or physically hungry, God can and will feed you if you choose to come to him. He doesn't go about shoving food down people's throats. He will usually wait for you to come. And if you approach him, I can guarantee you that he will give you food. Again, scripture is replete with examples where God fed his people, both with spiritual and physical food. Your part is to believe that he is who he says he is. The last attribute in this verse is that the Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. My dear listeners, I could stay on this one for a whole day. Again, if there is anyone listening to me from the prisons, actual prisons, God can give you freedom even after an earthly judge has remanded you. I have heard several testimonies of this kind of thing. But there is an even worse kind of captivity, a spiritual captivity that can keep a man bound for years, even though he seems free. There are spiritual prisons that hold men and women bound in the spiritual. These kinds of bondage manifest in various ways, mental attacks, consistent loss of jobs, failure at the edge of breakthrough, recurrent demonic generational cycles and patterns. The scripture says, irrespective of the prison. God gives freedom to the prisoners. This year, my dear listeners, I challenge you to believe God is who he says he is. And if you do, you will agree with me that rather than put your trust in the help of man whose powers are limited, you will make this God your go-to person for help. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you so much for your word. Lord, this morning, we just want to acknowledge you as our help. Continue to take all the glory, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Speak to you again soon. If you were blessed, please drop me a line on audiodevotional at yahoo.com or on our website at www.3minutesaudiodevotional.com. Remember, wrapped up in God's word is all you need for your change to come. Love you and bye.